the Duke of Kabatashai, as he was popularly known, Charles Mugane Jonjo is dead. Aged 101, he died today at 5 a.m. President Turu Kenyatta announced that particular death in a statement, sending also his message of deepest sympathy and condolences. And of course, also, message continues to trickle in for the family of Sir Charles Njonjo. We shall be relaying that for you much, much, much later in the course of this broadcast. But right now, also, we want just to apprise you with what is happening in Karyoko, where his body is being cremated there. And also, we'll give you just a history of his profile, how he became the first Attorney General of Kenya and learning more on how he navigated also the choppy waters of politics. Remember also during the installation of uh, Vice President Dana Turutich Arab Moy, he was very pivotal, stabilizing figure and a steady hand as well. We just want to give you that particular profile for you to just get an inkling of where he was coming from and how also he has finished strong. His pinstriped suits, custom made and tailored in Britain, resplendently worn with a rose lapel and a chain with a watch for a pendant, described the signature look of a man to whom appearances meant everything. Charles Mugane Njonjo. A man with preferences for all things British, so much so that he earned himself the nickname Sir Charles or the Duke of Kabetesha. A man who will go down in history as Kenya's first post-independence attorney general, one of the most powerful the country has had yet. For a decade and a half, beginning 1963, Njonjo was the country's chief legal advisor who initiated changes to the law, some of which helped shape post-independence Kenya, while others were considered controversial and retrogressive. Shortly after he was appointed the Attorney General by President Jomo Kenyatta, Njonjo repealed the colonial laws that had turned Kenya into a colony and introduced the death penalty for robbery with violence. In the late 60s and 70s, when political opposition to the regime was unheard of, dissenters were detained without trial as Njonjo, who could not be challenged in any way, held immense power to initiate and end cases. He, for instance, ended without question capital punishment for a black man who had raped a white woman. Under his watch, the Public Order Act, which restricted public gatherings, remained in force and media freedom was curtailed. He also made moves seen as retrogressive for a country that had just gained independence. Njonjo opposed the use of Swahili in Parliament, a move that was defeated when the House in 1975 declared Swahili and English official languages. The Attorney General registered the then revered Gikuyu Embu Meru Association Gema, but later opposed the group in 1976 and charged some of its members, including Kehika Kimani, with treason. It took President Jomo Kenyatta's intervention to overturn the charge. But it was the Kenyatta succession that may have further secured him a slot among the clique of Kenya's most influential men in the Kenyatta regime, one who later emerged as a kingmaker. The powerful Mount Kenya Mafia who surrounded Jomo Kenyatta were pushing to have the constitution amended to bar a sitting vice president from automatically ascending to the presidency upon the incapacitation or death of the president. The change, the constitution movement as it came to be known, would have shut out Vice President Daniel Moy from succeeding Kenyatta. Kenyatta had not given any indication of a preferred successor, but the powerful power brokers wanted Akikuyu to take over the presidency. Njonjo Akikuyu swam against the current of those pushing for a second Kikuyu presidency, earning himself friends and four. He became famous for the legal provision that made it treasonable to imagine the death of a president. That move was credited with quieting the storm and paving the way for Daniel Arab Moy to take over when Kenyatta died. Njonjo continued serving as Attorney General under Moy until 1980 when he was appointed Minister for Constitutional Affairs. The same year, he was elected Kikuyu Member of Parliament. As Constitutional Affairs Minister, Jonjo wielded the same power he did as Attorney General. 
He pushed for the constitutional amendment that made Kenya a one-party state. But the powerful minister would soon start losing his grip on power. After the August 1982 attempted coup, Jonjo was accused of being behind the coup plot. On the 29th of June 1983, he was suspended from the cabinet and a day later was forced to resign as an MP and was suspended from Kanu. A judicial commission led by Cecil Miller was set up to investigate him. The commission of inquiry concluded that Jojo, who was represented by among others lawyer Paul Muite, was guilty of abuse of office. Moi came to Njonjo's aid and issued a presidential pardon in December 1984. After the pardon, Njonjo kept a somewhat low profile for 15 years until 1998 when President Moi appointed him the chairman of the Kenya Wildlife Service. After heading the wildlife watchdog, Njonjo slowly faded from the national scene, but his tenure in government left an indelible mark on Kenya's political landscape. The once powerful minister was born in 1920, a son of colonial chief Josiah Njonjo. After his early childhood education, he joined the Lions High School and later the King's College Budo in Uganda before proceeding to Fort Hare University, South Africa for his law degree. He was later admitted to Exeter University London School for a diploma in social anthropology and thereafter enrolled for a law degree at Lincoln's Inn, graduating in 1954. He landed his first job in England at the London Chambers before returning to Kenya in 1955. Back home, he served as the Assistant Registrar General up to 1960 when he became the Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, but would soon rise to become a powerful insider in the Kenyatta government after his appointment as Attorney General. But his title as Kenya's first AG in post-independence Kenya is not the only thing that set him apart. Njonjo did not quit the Bachelors Club in accordance with ordinary expectation until 1972 when he was 52 years old. Njonjo married 34-year-old Margaret Bryson with whom they got two children. Sir Charles grew to become one of the wealthiest Kenyans with interest in banking, aviation and other sectors of the economy. A man to whom swimming was a daily exercise the lover of things British carved himself an iconic figure in the civil service as a powerful, revered, long-serving attorney general and influential minister for constitutional affairs. Greta Tinina, KTN News. Yeah, that is a, a very compelling story featured there by Rita Tinina just giving you the profile of Charles Njonjo. And as uh, many